Okay, everyone, welcome back. All right, so based on some feedback, <clears throat> comments, I dare say popular demand because that's a little bit arrogant, but what we're going to do is we're going to do a tour of the layout. There have been uh, several new subscribers over the recent months, and I realized, and they're quite correct when they point this out, that I haven't really done an overview of the layout, and a lot's changed. I'm not going to go into all the changes. Um, I just don't have time for all that. Uh, there are you know, all the videos that are up on this on the uh, on the channel. However, I thought you know they're right. I really ought to kind of walk through so people can get grounded, kind of understand the layout because I never really showed the whole thing. I show areas I'm working on and this and that and stuff, but never the entire thing. So <clears throat> what we're gonna do? We're gonna start off with a couple segments that just kind of ground the railroad in the real world, take a look at the track plan, uh, you know, talk about the, the, the names of the places that you tend to hear in the videos, and then we'll come back and we'll actually walk around and do a tour and actually point out various things around the layout. Uh, we'll probably start here in Eugene Yard, head east, and we'll walk around the layout. So let's hop into, uh, what I have, three segments, I think, of... Um, of the, how the layout sits in the real world and the track plan itself and then we'll come back and actually start the the tour around the layout all right so here is a map of the western Pennsylvania area and this is where the railroad sits physically at least in my mind we start up here in Eugene, which is actually Erie. That's where the coal dock is and the major classification yard. And then from Eugene, we head railroad east. We head down, basically following the old route of the Pennsylvania, Philadelphia, and Erie line into what I call Wallace Junction, which is actually Warren, Pennsylvania. In Warren, Wallace Junction, the Olean branch comes off and runs over to its namesake town in Olean, New York. This is where the railroad inter interchanges mostly with the New York Central and the Erie. And this is where uh, the milk traffic, what little bit is left, comes in and goes to Eugene, and also coal traffic and some manifest freight traffic. After Wallace, we head down again, heading railroad east to a town I call Lake City, somewhere here in the hinterland of Pennsylvania. And then it continues on to what I call Fairview. In Fairview is where I access staging. Staging to the east, which I named Williamsport. Just to give it a town's name, that's to the east. Of course, the main interchange there is with the Reading, getting into the Philadelphia area. Also, the New York Central, getting up to you know, uh, the uh, Pennsylvania division of the New York Central. And, of course, the Pensy also came in as well. And then from Fairview, we continue along the long route here, which is actually about 15 feet over to Sharon, Pennsylvania, which is located right about where Sharon is. There's, that's the other side of staging. There's another stub yard here that is the west staging, what I call Cleveland. And then from Sharon, the line runs north along the old Erie and Pittsburgh of the Pensy which is really just a curve around the end of the layout room, and then we're back in Eugene. Now, the town names, Eugene was changed uh, out of respect for my father after he passed away, so I named the main yard Eugene. Wallace Junction, Lake City, and Fairview are all actually along the lakeshore uh, where you know we live. We live in Fairview, Pennsylvania, so we decided back when Steve and I were Initially, setting up the new layout, we were going to model along the lakeshore because it was modern era. It's where we live. It's what we knew. We decided to model that. So we picked town names that are along that area. And I just didn't feel like changing them. I did change Sharon from Pittsfield because in Sharon, Pennsylvania, is where the Westinghouse Company had their large transformer factory, which I will have on this layout. And Olean never really was named. It was a branch. It was more a branch to bring things back into the workshop. 
but I expanded the staging there to uh, ex expand operational possibilities. So I decided to name it Ole and again to ground it somewhere in the physical world. So that's it. That is the uh, layout, how it sits in the real world. One slight nuance to it is I have a little block here that, you know, due to labor agreements, all the traffic basically off the Olean branch has to run the long way here, down and around into Eugene. Well, the real reason is because of poor layout design here in Wallace, you can only go that way. At least without having to pull in the main, run around your train, and it, eh, it'd be a mess. In reality, I'm sure the railroad would have a Y or a connecting track to get it from the Olean branch to go directly west into Eugene. So that's one little compromise in the layout, and I overcome it by saying, okay, hey, there's some uh, far-reaching old labor agreements, and the trains have to run both to and from Olean, from Eugene, have to run the long way around into Wallace and then up to Olean. So that's just giving me some operational interest, a little bit of a longer run, but it's really because of the fact that the layout isn't designed properly. So, okay, so that's the layout in the real world. Now let's go take a look at the actual track plan. Okay, in terms of the basement itself and where the layout sits, this is an overall view of the basement. I drew this up in Third Planet. I apologize, I don't have a better track plan, like one of those fancy pretty ones you see in Model Railroader. I don't have the software to do that, so we'll have to live with this. Um, you come down the basement, I have a crew lounge, there's a TV, refrigerator, and you can get some refreshments in there. There's access here into my mechanical room, which is where staging is. I'll cover that in a moment. Come through a door into the workshop, and then through a swing gate into the layout itself. The overall dimensions of the layout room from this wall over to this wall is about 48 feet, give or take. And the width, overall width at the max, this wall to this wall is about 14 and a half feet. So that's the overall size of the layout. Again, along this one wall here is the Eugene Yard area. From Eugene, you come into Wallace Junction, around the peninsula into Lake City. Another curve of the swing gate into Fairview. Here at Fairview, you can go into staging from this direction. You're heading to Williamsport staging. This is the southern route that I mentioned that comes around into Sharon. Then here's the access from the Cleveland staging. It comes into Sharon. And then the old E&P, Erie and Pittsburgh route, is really just this one curve from Sharon around into Eugene Yard. So let's take a little bit closer look at the, just the track plan itself and cover some more details of the layout. Okay, so zoom in on the track plan to show it a little bit more clearly. Uh, this is the, uh, again, the layout again. Some more information, the minimum radius on the main line is 30 inches. Uh, turnouts are, most of them are number eights. Nearly every turnout on the main line, all the crossovers, on off the main line are number eight. There are some exceptions that I'll note as we do a quick run around here. The height of the bench work is between 42 to 44 inches. Not a whole lot of mountainous running here. It's just, it's pretty much level. There are some grades here and there, but for the most part, it's a fairly level layout. The control, it is uh, DCC. I use CVP products, Easy DCC. Uh, that system had it for several years now. I do have CMRI uh, with a computer running Visual Basic, uh, which I'll be using for the dispatcher, tower operators, and controlling the signals. So again, starting off here in Eugene Yard, which used to be visible staging, but we converted it when we changed the idea for the layout here. This is where the cold dock was added. The engine terminal was added. There's some industry along the back. The south yard is the coal yard. The north yard is the classification yard, I'll call it, for lack of a better term. Mostly, uh, you know, coal trains will come in and get sorted to go to the coal dock on the, north, the northern yard, the north yard. It's mostly drop pick for the local industries. 
and some interchange amongst trains going to different areas that basically swap blocks. So not a whole lot of switching. Then heading east out of Eugene, we come around the end here. Over in this little area here is where my electrical panel is. Now the door there was removed. It's covered with a backdrop. You can get in there through crawling under the layout. So you can get into the, you know, there's actually a radon fan in here and, and the, the, the main breaker box for the house. So then we come, along, come around into Wallace Junction. This is the latest design of Wallace Junction. Here's where the Olean branch comes off and heads into staging. It comes up, runs here, and directly into staging. So not a real long run. It's, it's basically Wallace and boom, you're right into uh, Olean and staging. And then you come up around the peninsula here, and you come into Lake City. This is the new design, just got finished, redone with the major industry here. Uh, station out of the crossover, changed the arrangement of the tracks to make it a little bit more conducive to operations. And then out of Lake City, you continue around this end of the layout, a big curve over the swing gate. This is how you get access into the layout. I'll show this on the visual on the actual tour, but I, I don't recommend doing this if you can avoid it. It works, but it's got some issues, but it's what I had to do. And then you come across that into Fairview, Pennsylvania. And then here at Fairview, you can either head into staging, and from Fairview, you head into Williamsport staging, which is this four track stub yard. Again, the main line, the one track does go all the way through. Also out of Fairview, then you can come, to, which this is the southern route that I show, showed on the map before, which is basically just a 10, 15 foot run over into Sharon that gives you some continuous running ability. And then here in Sharon, Pennsylvania, you have the other access to staging, which is the Cleveland staging, which is another three track, actually four track, there's a short one here. So there's two four track stub yards. Uh, first each staging and then the, the main track does run through if you want to run continuously through there you could also here in sharon is the main westinghouse factory the transformer factory that i'm going to be modeling there and then out of sharon you come up the old erie in pittsburgh into eugene which is really just coming right around the end of the layout here <laughs> and then you're back into eugene so that's the overall track plan it did change quite a bit throughout its uh, short but interesting life. Again, it started off as a rail fan, your layout type of situation with Steve and I. Uh, it was in the modern era. And then my father passed away. Steve kind of got uh, interested in, in other things, as in uh, Ford Mustangs and diesel trucks and girlfriends and et cetera, et cetera. So I kind of backdated the layout to the mid-50s after my father passed away, renamed this Eugene, uh, and then got involved with operations, meeting some of the folks here from the local NMRA division and other model editors, realized that, yeah, it was a nice layout, but it really, really was not conducive to operations. So that's when many, many things were changed. The staging was added. I, redid, I did read this town about three times it seems the yard pretty much is the same although the north yard or the south yard which now the coal yard was going to be an intermodal yard well that's not really in play back in the mid 50s i do have a real small intermodal ramp over here for it's just starting but now it's a coal yard and the class yard is the same the industries i did add some more industries along here to give some operational interest I changed the track plan here in Wallace a little bit. I totally redid Lake City. I totally redid Fairview. <laughs> I totally redid Sharon. I added the stagings. Oh, uh, yeah. So a lot of changes. Overall, it's the same. The you know the, the route from Eugene out around Peninsula, around the room, didn't change. However, a lot of changes were made in terms of the towns, the track layouts, and... Uh, the way we can operate the layout. I've had a couple operating sessions, uh, unfortunately, before the worldwide pandemic hit. Uh, hopefully, we'll get back to that pretty soon. And so far, the operating scheme seems pretty good. Got to tweak it a little bit. 
uh, definitely learning as we go along, but uh, much happier with it now in terms of the operational ability of the layout. So that's it. That's the uh, the track plane, and now let's go take a look um, at the layout in real life. All right, here we go. Walking tour of the layout. I'm going to do this handheld. Uh, so hopefully I will remember to be very gentle and it won't be nauseating or, or too uh, motion sickness inducing. But uh, if I had a tripod, it'd just be too cumbersome to walk around and, and talk about things. So Eugene Yard. This is the, what you're looking at now is actually Eugene West. And I'll go ahead and start down here. This is the engine terminal area. This was one of the recent ads that I wanted to include on the layout. A little bit darker back here in this corner. That's a Walther's turntable, which is controlled here on this control panel. Works fine. I really have no issues with it. It seems to work as intended, and it indexes fine. I've, I haven't had any issues with it. I haven't used a whole lot, but it's, it's used every op session, and so far it seems to be fine. On the right there, that machine shop, that's from Shorty Parker's layout that I incorporated here. The roundhouse itself is an MBZ kit, European prototype that I kind of Americanized as they went through. Like I said, this was all added here. This was not here as part of the original layout, but I just... You know, an engine terminal is just so railroady. I just had to include it. So this is all a relatively recent addition. <clears throat> Videos, of, of course, cover all this stuff. It, just go back in history and you'll see it all. In the back there is a large industry. Okay, so the interlocking over there with that coal train sitting, which if you watch the rail fan video, you may recognize it. He's waiting to get into the south yard. That's Eugene West. New York Central bracket signal there guards that interlocking on this side. This is kind of a team track and uh, unloading track there in the back for the Erie Concrete Steel and Supply Company. Now the issue with this is, this is not something I recommend. The problem is with the addition of the engine terminal, it's a challenge to reach back there. Because, you're, A, you're reaching over the engine terminal, which is, of course, dangerous. And to get back there, you know, you really got to reach in, which is not, not very good. Eh. You can kind of reach the first two tracks, okay, where the where that one milk butter dish car is. And that's the inter, intermodal ramp I mentioned. Very, very, you know, the intermodal's in its infancy here. So I will have a couple cars come in and out and be dropped there. And then some larger stuff that goes in the back there for the industry. Larger industrial type loads. I did add two KD couplers. Eh, yeah, they're okay. Uh, it's not say they work all that great. They work okay. But that, that's kind of a problem area back there, to be in all honesty. So the engine terminal's got its diesel service area. Still the uh, various accoutrements to handle the steam engines that still run. The layout set... I'm going to say 1957-ish, but I'm not real hardcore on that. I'll run steam if I want to. I mean, there's really not much left. I think the New York Central was dieselized well before it. The Pensy, you know, might have hung on a wee bit longer. But anyway, it's it's my layout. I like running steam and diesel, so that's what I'm going to do. So when you come in, let me kind of walk over this way. Here's the other end of Eugene West. That's a New York Central signal bridge there. So looking at the yard itself, you have the engine terminal leads that come out, the coal dock, which was an addition. It's a Walther's kit that was kit bashed together. The south yard is the coal yard, so to speak. The main line splits it right down the shinner. And then on the north side there is the, the north yard, the, the class yard, and some industries along the back. This is used, again, mostly for, you know, swapping blocks, dropping off cars, uh, blocks of cars, picking up blocks of cars. It's not a real heavy 
class yard. And then the coal yard, south yard, is used to break down and get cars up to the dock, bring down the empties, assemble empty trains, get power out of the engine terminal and dispatch them. They, they almost always head east, heading toward Williamsport. Although some will, going up the Olean branch, will head, they're actually also going east, but they head out the other end of the yard. So let me walk along here. The controls, you can notice, these are not the original control panels. They're not nearly as nice as my original ones. I made these up in a masonite, and they're really not that good. You can see why. <laughs> Stickers are coming off. They're controlled by toggles. Uh, I haven't labeled this one totally yet. Again, it's also the main line uh, switches, the crossovers, and to and from the main line will be controlled by the CMRI system. They can be controlled by the CMRI system. They can be controlled locally or through the CMRI. The Most of the new turnouts here on the front for the south yard are Pico number 8s, and they're all hand throws. I figured, why complicate it? Just... Make them hand throws, because they're right, right in the front of the layout, easy to get to, there's no sense wiring them up. Back over this way, we do have a caboose track here, which is also, it doubles as the programming track, roughly from here to here, basically the whole thing can be set up as a programming track. Here's the, the main command station for the CVP system. Easy DCC. I did use some RR ramp meters as volt and amp meters for the various districts. So there's three districts. One is the Eugene district, which is basically the yard. And then one that runs from the yard over to the swing gate, then the swing gate back around the yard. I'll kind of show that as we go. This end of Eugene yard was fairly recently modified as well. I didn't have a switch lead. So you had to go right on the main line to do any pulling, doubling, making up trains, pulling cuts of cars, etc., etc. So I said, that's not going to work for operations. So we modified it, and now this is a yard lead that comes in here and runs all the way back to there. It's not as long as it should be, but it's, it's, it's longer than it was, which was nothing. So, <laughs> so it's not too terribly bad. So again, you don't have to come into the the main line I used to come to the main line right here, but then I just modified things. Again, there are some more industries here in the back. This interlock in here, which is Eugene East, as labeled thusly, used to only have one crossover. When I redid the town of Sharon, I brought a crossover over and added it in here. So that's been saved from another part of the layout and brought over. And then at the very end, just before the bridge, is the Eugene Station. Small little station. Didn't have it before. I added it. And that's something I built uh, on the old layout uh, in, uh, out of uh, mem mem remembrance of my father. He was a big Redding fan. It's actually painted more in Redding colors. And I realize it's dark here, but I can't really do a whole lot. I should add another light. But uh, that was why well, I wanted to include it. So I had to rework this entire area here to add that station in. It's kind of just a little thing there at the end of the yard. Again, the one main mistake I made was the backdrop. I've covered that before, and people have complained about it. It's just the way it is. I don't like it, but you can see how I tried to do something to save it. It looks stupid, I know, but it is what it is. All right, so that's Eugene Yard. Originally... The south yard was an intermodal yard, a two-track intermodal yard where we could run double double stack trains, um, basically from the engine terminal. No, that was there, so the aisle was quite a bit wider. The other yard was still pretty much the same. Like we wanted nice long tracks and uh, number eight turnouts because we were going to run double stacks, auto racks, real long trains. It basically was visual, visible staging is what it was. But now it's been kind of converted somewhat into an operating classification yard. And then I ripped out the intermodal tracks and then added some more tracks for the coal yard, the coal dock, and eventually running up to the engine terminal. So, okay, we're going to continue east. 
We'll take a walk and then we'll head over to Wallace Junction. Okay, picking up here at Eugene East. We head over the double track Central Valley Bridge that I wanted to build and have. It's really not, I, again, I should have planned better. And you can see, oh my goodness, look how dusty my little pond is. <laughs> yeah, I, I, full disclosure, I haven't cleaned the layout or anything. I'm just doing a walk around tour. So you're, you're going to see it, and it's all its messy glory. This should have been a river. It should have, you know, been b better tied into the backdrop. And maybe even had another, another railroad running along it, just to add some visual interest. Uh, anyway, it is what it is. I wanted to have something like that, and I know it's kind of hard to see here, but... That's something that I decided to add. Then the line just continues along here. This scenery is just kind of the real rough stuff. Need to uh, come back in here and finish this up. Goes into a tunnel. Wasn't going to be a cut, but I decided to make a tunnel. In fact, this... I'm trying to even see where it is. Basically up here is there's a hatch. I'm real nervous about hidden track. I had some real, real bad experiences with them on the old layout. So, when I decided to put a tunnel in here, I think basically from these trees over somewhere under here, I can pop that whole thing out. I can also access it underneath. Again, there, underneath there is where you go when you get to the electrical box, the radon fan, you have the crawl, there used to be a door there. You can still see the door frame above the backdrop. On this side, I pulled the door out and saved it. <laughs> Okay, so then it comes through the tunnel, and we're into Wallace Junction. Now this originally was where the Bessemer Lake Erie came in, but now it's the Olean branch that comes in. And that runs there to the right, up into staging, which is Olean, Pennsylvania. A little two-track, I can't really call it a yard, two tracks there, there's a couple cars sitting there. This is because okay, this has been recently finished and redone as well. There's videos on that. This shows the industries here in Wallace Junction. And then this is one of the original control panels. And again, this was reverse engraved. I paid a fair amount of money for these. You can see it says Wallace Junction. So that's why I didn't change it. <laughs> again, it really shouldn't be Wallace Junction. It should be some other more realistic town name, but whatever. Good enough. There's a set of double crossovers here, and this is what I mean when trains come out of the Olean branch, they can only go one way, east. There should be a way they could, in the real world, they would cut and go over to head into Eugene, but didn't plan it right, and so I'm stuck with it the way it is. So it comes along here, joins into the main, and it can, can, can continue east. This bridge here is a, I think it's a Monroe Models, I think, I don't remember. I think I modified it slightly with the, with the, the railings on it are a little bit different, I don't remember, but that was a, as a kit. This is uh, the, I have a couple of these, this is just to show it, this is an electrically hand locked. This is for the turnout off the main into the creamery siding. You have to come in, and right now it's it's locked. Normally the, the crew would have a key with them, which I may or may not do, but I'll just have it hang here. But basically now it's locked. So with it being locked, it won't do anything. When you unlock it, the light goes on, and now you can throw the turnout. Okay, and this is tied into the CMRI. So that once you unlock it, the computer knows it's unlocked, and it'll set the corresponding signals on that track here at the west end of the interlocking, and also down at the east end, they'll, they'll drop to red. So whenever you unlock it, it knows that, and it'll go red. All right, so we can continue up here. It's all double track mainline. Again, it's because at the time... We designed the layout. Steve and I were going to... Basically, Steve just wanted to run trains and rail fan the layout. I had a couple little things here and there for operation. 
but we decided to make it double track so we could just run trains. Some houses up along here. Come up along outside the peninsula. This is a scratch built bridge. Not really all that involved, but it is scratch built. A little overpass there for the road. Then we continue around the end of the peninsula. So looking back into Wallace and where we came from. This is what happens when the CMRI system is not running. You can see kind of the funky <laughs> signal indication. That's because this the you know, these are common anode signals and they to light them you ground the red, yellow, or green. Well when the computer's on, they're set red, 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 so everything's red. Now when you turn it on and off and don't run the computer, the board is when it, whatever state it's in, it's in. So obviously right there, the top left. None of those are grounded. Bottom left, the green's grounded, etc., etc. So anyway, you never know what you're going to get when you turn the layout on without the computer running. So that comes through Volish Junction around the peninsula here. In 30-inch radius on the inside. It's about 32 and a half on the outside. Ugh. Come along here. Here's the Eugene Local. I just started in a recent video. And we come around and we're into Lake City. That signal bridge has been replaced. I used to have one that was modeling the uh, over a QD 103 on the CSX line here. Took it out, added a backdate a little bit to the a New York Central signal bridge for a couple different reasons. This area here. So the earliest scenery, that's some of the teddy bear fur. Probably need some more trees. And then the, the plan is all up. This is all going to be treed. Again, to kind of give a little bit of, you can kind of see the armature sitting there. But this is to give a little bit of a view block. So when you're operating over here, the theory is it's not going to work all that great. But it's going to block it so you can't see back into Eugene. All right, so I just covered this, but this is Lake City. Couple of videos. We just went through how this transformed and got completed. Pretty happy with the way this all turned out. And it was originally going to be based on Lake City, Pennsylvania. That's a scratch built building that is the All Aboard Diner, is there now. And it's a, a diner. D I N O R. I posted videos on that and people told me you spelled it wrong. No, I didn't. For some reason, in this part of Pennsylvania, they spell diners D-I-N-O-R. Hey, go figure. So what I wanted to do here was that station is actually removable. And my plan was if I switch eras and run modern, which I'm not going to do. In all honesty, I'm not. But I could pull that out. If I build the actual diner itself, plop it in there, and boom, I'm back in the modern era. But that's too much of a pain, to be honest. So this area, again, talked about the little park there. And this, the lights, the gas station, the abandoned warehouse. All right, so then we keep chugging along. There's Barney relaxing down there. Then we head out of Lake City into this big curve. I do want to do some more scenery here. Probably some more trees, more of the super tree variety as background trees to kind of tree it in. I'm pretty happy with the front side of it. Maybe just refresh things a little bit. This is some of the earliest stuff I did. And then we'll take a quick break and we'll go show um, the staging yard that's only in, and we'll come back to the main layout. Okay, it is dark over here. I had to crank the ISO. I need to add some lights. For a workshop, it's fine, but trying to operate and read car numbers, it's a problem. So, like I said, from Wallace Junction, the only branch comes up, goes almost immediately into hidden trackage. Yeah, it makes me nervous, but it's the best way for me to, to do it. Comes out of the tunnel here, and then into staging. So it's not a real long run. But I did expand staging. I made it longer. I made some of the tracks longer over the workbench. So you can stage some pretty decent amount of trains up in here. Basically from here back was all was all added. 
I did a little, a little bit of rewiring. All the tracks can be turned off so you don't have a cacophony of locomotives always running. In here, I have two pockets. You can park road power or cabooses and flats and <laughs> baggage cars. This track right here is a programming track that I use JMRI through a Sprog, which is there, and my old computer, which is there, which also can run the CMRI Visual Basic program. So this ancient old computer is what does all that. So I can program locomotives here. It can be off, program, or run. So works pretty nice. I like JMRI, uh, Dakota Pro. Getting more and more to that. So this is staging only in New York. And of course, the rest is the workshop as well. Kind of a mess right now. I got some DCC things going on. I won't mention it, but I got a ripped apart Rapido RS11. Ugh. Oh, Rapido, how you had to make that shell come off. Anyway, that's a whole other story that I probably won't tell. All right, so let's go back to the main side and continue along the main line. Okay, here we are, back on the main layout side. Okay, we come across, again, uh, the curve there out of Lake City, and we come to Swing Gate. Now, this, <laughs> it's okay. I, I, I highly recommend you don't do something like this, but just based on the way that this layout room was set up, it's how I had to get in. It was originally a lift-out piece that Steve and I just lifted out, but as I'm getting older, and crawling back and forth, this wasn't my thing. So I worked with uh, my main man, Bill Schalf, and we came up with a design. And this is actually a swing gate. I wanted it to be this wide because I wanted to scenic it like this. This is actually a model of the railroad overpass of Route 98 in Fairview, Pennsylvania. If you know where that is and you look at that, you, you might say, hey, I kind of recognize that. Not exactly, but close. So in order to make a swing gate that wide and get the right curvature to have it swing, it was a bit of an engineering challenge. Got it done. It's okay. I think with changes in humidity, even though this layout room is climate controlled, air conditioned and heated, it still changes. I've noticed recently at this, you can see, okay, this, this gap is a lot larger than it used to be. You can see how big the gap there. It wasn't like that. It was about a sixteenth of an inch. So it does change. During the summer, it got tight. <laughs> Go figure. So it's definitely something that's kind of a, a pain in the rear, to be honest. I may, may have to at some point relay the track and recut it. But then again, I'm afraid I'll be chasing my tail. Um, so I don't know. I'll just You can run across it. you got to go slow. It's kind of like a permanent slow water over here, but things do run okay. The gate is latched closed with this latch. It is adjustable. So again, as things change, I can't adjust it to vary the tension on it, which I need to do sometimes. And I just changed it. And then the whole gate, you see it's got that radius in it. That's the hard part. It's harder than it looks <laughs> to figure that out. Pretty heavy duty. Again, I covered this before. This is nothing new for folks that have been around, but that is the swing gate. It'll swing all the way out. I still haven't done much with the wires down here, but nah. And it's been fairly sturdy. I mean, it's not leaning or, or uh, you know, sagging at all. So I'm pretty happy with the construction of the, of, the, of the gate itself. It's just something's moving, and... It might be this side that's moving. I don't know. But anyway, not the end of the world. It's it's okay. I've used them. You know, I'm dealing with it. However, I highly recommend, which you've seen everywhere. Every model router expert will tell you, don't do this. <laughs> but you do what you got to do. I don't yet have this tied into the signal system. But I do have a switch down here. So as it's... I won't be able to hear a click, but the switch will now be closed, so I know when the gate's open. So that way, if I need to, I know a lot of people have told me what I should do, which I haven't done. 
you know, draw power to a, a block here, especially if you have keep alives, which I don't yet, but I plan to. Well, I have one. My RDC3 is that the only thing I've got to keep alive. But, you know, drop the power if the gate's open, you know, six, eight, ten feet before it on that side. Same thing on this side, but yeah, I haven't done that. Nothing's fallen yet, but eh. Okay, so let me continue along. Now we're coming into Fairview. This is, it has changed in that I added these industries. I Again, I don't recommend they be on the front of the layout like that. But the way I laid it out with the main line being so close to the backdrop, I couldn't do what I would, I would have preferred to have the industries on the back side with the sidings in front. So A, it's easier to switch. B, you can actually see the cars there. But, you know, okay. I mean, it, it means like when you come down to drop cars, because you can drop a car here or at the coal pit, well, you don't want to reach behind it, so you have to uncouple it here and kind of push it by hand. It's not great, but it works. Same thing for this industry. Again, if there's a coal dock here, there's a unloading part, spot here, and there's a kind of a grain spot as well, so... Eh, okay. Not ideal. But again, this was just the way the original layout was. If I wanted to do something, it had to be on the aisle side. I don't recommend it. It scares me a little bit to have the, those nice craftsman kits. That's a South River kit. That's part of the South River kit. That's a Laser Modeling 3 kit. So these are expensive kits. I mean, these, these aren't, uh, you know, cheapo things. It took me a lot of work to get these done. Anyway, that's what they are. I don't recommend it, but that's what the way it is. There is an interlocking here. Again, a set of crossovers. And then I did add this industrial... Oops, I'm going to do it fast. Sorry about that. This industrial spur down to the Avonia Supply Building down there. Down to that scene. So that's that. Sorry about that. I had a sneeze come on. <laughs> Sorry about that. All right. So then again, the Avonia Supply down here. You see, I had to add some plexiglass because some dork damaged the building. That dork being me with my elbow. I hit that when I was doing some stuff. So I said, oh, great. I haven't fixed it yet, but I got to fix it. All right. So here in Fairview is where you can enter staging. And that is staging for the East Williamsport. Or the line continues on going to Sharon. So we're, we're going to walk over to Sharon, and then we'll take a quick look back at the, the main staging area. But this is where, you know, a lot of the traffic actually comes in and out of, of the staging area. And that's where it goes there. So it comes out here to the interlocking onto the main layout. And then we continue here, behind the scene here, behind a little pond area there, which is also really dusty. <laughs> And that's not done. I need to get some more trees up here, but I'll get there. So this is the southern route that I alluded to, which is a really long route, which is only about, like I said, 10, 15 feet, if that. So I'm just going to back up here. Oh, hopefully not wobble the camera too much. This area is pretty well scenic right now. What I do have, this is a control for staging. I did this to duplicate the staging turnout, so... If it was just Steve and I operating, I can control the, the, the turnouts back there on staging from out here. So I don't have to go running back there if I'm going to run a train in. Don't use it very much. It might actually take it out because it just gets in the way. And really for operating sessions, when I got people over, myself, or there's a person kind of assigned back there to work in the uh, staging area to keep things fluid. So... All right, so we come around this area here, again, which is recently done. Let me come around. I learned this set here, also recently done. Now, there's Steve's first Mustang. He now has a red one. Unfortunately, he his first Mustang, which was a blue one like that, got totaled. Wasn't his fault. He got hit by somebody. Let me come along here, and the single track goes back to double track. And we're coming into Sharon, Pennsylvania. There's the station. There's a video on that. Well, there's videos on all this stuff. There's another duplication of the, st of the staging turnouts on this end. Again, so uh, we can control 
if we're out here operating, don't have to run back there. Staging actually comes out this tunnel here, which I didn't really like, but you know, you, you do what you got to do. It's just a layout. <laughs> Is it perfect? No. Does it work? Yeah. All right, so that goes into staging. So that staging is staging west, as in Cleveland, to the west. Then we're into Sharon itself, which of course yet is not quite done. I need to get this to do, uh, get this moving here. That building there is Erie Builders. That's from Shorty Parker's layout. I really wanted to include it, so I didn't uh, do the transformer factory as the entire area, which it could easily be. But I wanted to incorporate that, so that's when Shorty's layout. That's why that's there. And then over here, but all this corner here is going to be the transformer factory. Much condensed, not really prototypical. It's best I could do. Um, it is going to have a drop track, a track for oil and kerosene, a storage track, high bay tracks where the main transformers come in into one of the buildings for delivery of you know, lumber and wood and other stuff. A scrap track where the metal scrap comes out like out of the tank shop. There's, there is a run around here, a little plant switcher, which right now is that Bachman S2. Should be a Pensy B, uh, B6SA or a B23 060 switcher. That's what was assigned there, or a GE44 tuner, or later on an SW1, but We'll get there. So this required a little bit of work. Again, to get the interlocking to reconfigured to come out of staging. I took the one crossover, left it in. The other crossover was here originally. That's been moved. That was the one that was moved over to Eugene East. There are going to be a couple more industries here on the front. There's the freight house. There's a spot or two there. This is going to be Mercer 2, I'm going to call it. There's going to be a shipping receiving area here. And then a heavier building here. I'm not sure yet what I'm going to do there. Again, it's right near the front. It's going to have to be something low. <laughs> because, again, one of the issues, it's a little bit of a reach to get back there. Now, there are some repeato on couplers for the two far track. Actually, the th there's four of them in there for the various tracks. They're controlled out here. They work okay. If your couplers are in decent shape, they do some they do work okay. Taller guys can reach. So it isn't a huge issue, but again, I shouldn't have done that. I should be closer to the aisle. Anyway. If I was gonna do it all over again, everything would be reachable by hand within like, you know, two feet. I wouldn't have anything crazy like that, like that boxcar back there. You're not gonna uncouple that. That's why there's one of the uncouplers there that hopefully it works. <laughs> So this is all going to be transformer building, tanks here for kerosene and, and uh, transformer oil. There's a storage track, a, a drop pickup track here. That trains can drop cars for the factory. There's one operator that can work this whole area for an op session if I keep him busy enough. There is enough work. And a train comes in and gives him more cars, so he's got to you know work. The factory and over here, which is you know getting the cars into the Erie Builder. There's a team spot here. That's just a switch lead going that way. So if I do it right, you definitely can keep one person busy over here in Sharon. And then from Sharon, it heads north into Eugene through this tunnel, which was just as a scene break. There's Shorty Parker's. <laughs> Black Bear, must be a cookout going on. So this area still has to be scenic. This is a, I should probably get to this. I just haven't because you're not back here all that much. And I didn't want to spend the time, but it, you can see it. It's just the ground foam on top of the pink foam. and So I need to get back here and get this done. So it comes around. There's the cabin of the coal train. Need to finish this area here. This side is pretty much done. And done good enough for back here. Need the detail back behind here. And you see, get the scenery done in here. And then you're back to the. Uh oh, uh oh. I think I might have had a feline back here. That wasn't not like that before, but the cat did sneak back here on me. So 
I'm not sure I'm going to do that. It's just kind of, oh, well, that's been moved too. Yeah, I think Giganta, Gigantator was back here. <laughs> Walking around. Anyway, so I do need to finish that area. And then here again is the engine terminal, and we're back in Eugene. So that is the layout. Let me do a quick pause and then we'll wrap things up. Alright, one thing I wanted to mention, you probably noticed coming out of Sharon there, those are Pensy position lights. I like those, I think they're cool. I wanted to incorporate them. So that interlocking is going to be Pensy position light just because eh, they own part of the line or some reason like that. And then coming in here into Sharon, this will be posi Pensy position light as well here and here here on the main and then also on the other side of the main will all be pensy position lights i just think they're cool and this is kind of like a i run it kind of as a joint line between the new york central and the pensy even though that's like you know dogs and cats living together but that's what i like that's what i'm gonna do all right one thing i did forget let's go take a quick look at staging so we can see where though the trains come from welcome to Williamsport and Cleveland <laughs> alright so this is the staging area and these tracks here are west staging which is Cleveland these three long ones and there's one short one Ugh. the ones over here are Williamsport and then the one track does run through this is where come in from Fairview and then go into Williamsport staging or you can run through which I don't normally do it in an op session but you could it's controlled from that control panel again I can turn the tracks on and off again so you don't have all those sound equipped locomotives barking at you I decided to add some storage so you can you have to do a little hand fiddling sometimes I know it's dark back there, but then that end there goes into Sharon. And this is the end of the tracks for Williamsport. So turnouts are controlled here. They could have been hand throws. I don't know why, but I mean, it's all right. That's a little bit further away. A little, a little bit nervous about this. There's the hot water heater. All of this is removable if I ever have to replace that, which I will. Probably within the next couple years, my furnace will have to be replaced. So when I designed this, I did talk to the guys that maintain my furnace, but this is all these, especially modular, and I can remove them. So hopefully it isn't too much of an issue when I have to do that and replace the furnace and the hot water heater, which will be coming at some point in time. So again, all these turnouts, you can see they're... That P goes controlled. Now these are sixes back here. I think I might have mentioned, you know, most of them on the main line are eights, but back here in staging there are sixes. No, they're not really number six curved, whatever the uh, fast tracks. They go by the radiuses on them. And then they're controlled with this control panel right here, which I really didn't have to do. It's like not like you can't reach the stuff. You know, overthinking things. I'm, okay, but if you're going to be have a guy back here, there's no reason he can't throw him by hand. Anyway, so again, more storage for hand fiddling if you had to. Although I never really had to, because you can set up basically three fairly good sized trains, a short one, so four, you know, heading onto the layout out of Cleveland. And vice versa, you can do four if you park one on the main line to start. I never run out of trains yet. I, mean, I find most people tend to want to stop operating. At least in my experience recently, out of after two and a half, maybe three hours, you know, you start at seven o'clock at night by ten, ten thirty, they're done. So I've never run out of trains yet. So, like I said, that's the here's the furnace that eventually is going to have to go. Now, in talking to the guys, they say they can probably can do it without me taking this out. But, just to be safe, again, all this, this is removable. They're kind of secured in bolts and latches, and I could get them back out. Um, 
the track there. I should be able to pull the track away if I did it right, if I remember correctly. If not, I can cut it and re, you know, re-secure it with some rail joiners because it's all powered back here anyway. So that is the main staging for Williamsport and Cleveland. Oh my, I forgot to mention, I do have a camera back here that is movable. I have an app on my phone. So if I was ever on the other side, I could use that to see how staging looks. To be honest, I haven't really used it a lot. It was something I probably didn't need to buy. It wasn't real expensive, though, so not a big deal. So it's there. Like I said, for most obsessions, there's a person back here kind of taking care of stuff. So that is that. Okay, so that will kind of wrap things up. Let me do a quick panorama here. Look it up toward Eugene and Sharon. And the next big project is probably going to be the Transformer Factory. As you can, you know, you saw the whole town of Sharon needs to be done. So that's going to be the winter project. Get that done. I got Lake City finished up. There's still a lot of things to do. I got to get the programming up. I got to get the signals all working. Most of which are wired, but I do need to get them working again. Love to have some more obsessions if we can, if this damn thing virus ever clears up. So. so that's it. So overall, you know, really not that large a layout. I mean, it, yeah, okay, it is. I know a lot of people say, oh, it's way bigger than mine, but I've seen a much, much larger layout. I don't know how people do it. This is about all I can handle in terms of layout, just in terms of, in terms of the, the, you know, the size, the time, the money. It's a lot. So... You know, it's, it's not double deck. I, I never, I never was a fan of double deck layouts. Just don't like them. Personal thing. I mean, I'm not. Like, I shouldn't say I don't. I, to me, I'd rather have a nice open layout, single deck. You can tell this is not overly crowded. I did add some more industries and whatnot, and when I wanted to get more into operation. But overall, it's not a spaghetti bowl. It's just kind of around the room, double track line. A lot of scenery, which I like. Enough industry to keep a you know keep a person busy during the session. But I don't know. To me, I, I and I have to do helixes and double deck. And I, I anyway, it's just not my thing. Nothing wrong with it. Don't get upset if that's what you want to do. That, that's cool. But it just that's not my thing. So so that's it. All right. So again. Look for videos coming up on sharings. I really need to get this area moving. It's got still got that, that ugly green. The wrong color green. <laughs> so that is the big project for the winter. Along with other things and running some trains, having some fun. So that's it. So hopefully that was uh, helps you kind of understand when I talk about various things here on the layout. Any questions that I missed, didn't cover, let me know. Just throw them in the comments. I'll try to answer them or any ideas for other videos or anything like that. I'm certainly open to it. I know I need to do some more running train videos, and I'd like to get some obsession videos when I'm allowed to do that. That's it. All right. So thanks for watching. That is the tour of the Bennett Railroad. I, I haven't named it, so I can't. You know, I'm not real good at coming up with fancy, witty names. <laughs> you know, Pennsylvania, Northern, and Western. Or Williamsport, Erie, and Youngstown. I don't know. I just, whatever. It's it's a layout. I don't have a name for it. So, <laughs> I just call it the Bennett Railroad, if you wonder why. I don't have some fancy name. Anyway, thanks for watching. More to come. We'll keep plugging away down here at the layout and uh, keep posting videos. So, more to come.